Magnetars have to be some of the most fascinating objects out there. The objects whose magnetic field is so ridiculously powerful that even chemical reactions become impossible next to them. As a matter of fact, even being approximately 1000 kilometers away from the center of a typical magnetar would be enough to start disturbing the electrons inside your atoms, thus rendering any chemical reaction impossible, shutting down any activities required for life and also causing dramatic effects inside any cells in any body present so close. But what's really intriguing is that these objects were not known to us up until a few decades ago. As a matter of fact, the first proposition for their existence was only made back in 1992 by Robert Duncan and Christopher Thompson. And they were mainly used to explain unusual observations we refer to as soft gamma ray bursts that have been discovered from various locations in the last few decades. There was no theoretical proposition of what can possibly cause them until the scientists proposed that maybe there's a very, very powerful neutron star, more powerful than any other neutron star known to us, that was producing ridiculously powerful magnetic fields, making these objects the most powerful magnets in the universe, up to a billion times more powerful than the most powerful magnet produced on planet Earth. And the theory behind these objects made a lot of sense, but it wasn't until a few years later that the first magnetar was discovered. And to date, we've confirmed 24 different magnetars out there, and each of them does seem to possess these unusual effects that seem to explain a lot of observations from around the universe. And more recently, the magnetars were also used to explain another new mystery detected a few decades ago. Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to be discussing this relatively new study that as always you can find in the description below that explains a really interesting observation detected from a magnetar a couple of years ago that might also finally explain the true origin of at least some of the fast radio bursts, FRBs. And in this case it seems to involve something really really extreme happening on the surface, potentially some kind of a volcanic eruption, or I guess the equivalent of an eruption in magnetar terms. And more importantly, it also seems to explain why certain magnetars act certain way and why certain magnetars seem to change some of their properties, potentially solving a few mysteries in the process. Well, let's, I guess, start with the basics. We know that all of this starts with a very specific type of a supernova that usually ends up in a neutron star and not in a black hole. But for some reason, in some extremely rare cases, this type of a neutron star ends up being extremely magnetic. It's not clear how this is produced, and it's even been suggested that maybe two neutron stars have to collide for all of this to happen, but it does seem to imply that occasionally we end up with what's known as a magnetar, a supermagnetic neutron star. And one of the more intriguing objects discovered in the last few decades was actually the one in the Milky Way itself, the soft gamma ray repeater known as SGR 1935-2154, that almost certainly is a magnetar right here in the Milky Way galaxy. Several types of emissions have already been detected coming from this object, and the all can only be explained if this is a magnetar about 30,000 light years away from planet Earth. But intriguingly enough, back in October of 2020, something really unexpected was discovered coming from this location. This object started to emit radio waves. Okay, by itself that's not unusual. What is unusual is the fact that unlike pulsars which emit radio waves that repeat extremely regularly and can actually even be used in navigation, this was not the case at all. This object emitted several extremely fast pulses of radio emissions, which we often call FRBs, fast radio bursts. And if you watched any of the previous videos, you know that this is actually today one of the biggest cosmological mysteries. At the moment there is no clear explanation for why and how these are formed and for what actually creates them. But many theories and propositions have always suggested that it could be magnetars. And this detection back in 2020 almost definitively confirmed that at least some FRBs are definitively caused by magnetars. But there was still no explanation for how or why. And since FRBs were now detected practically almost every day now, coming from various directions around the universe, this was now even a bigger mystery. This facility in Canada, known as CHIME, is responsible for discovering most of them so far. And so what was happening here and why were so many discovered in so many different locations? And were these essentially signs of something happening on the surface of different magnetars in a lot of different locations around the universe? Well, there were quite a few propositions and quite a few explanations. Some, for example, involved some kind of an orbiting object around the magnetar, potentially causing effects on the surface that would then result in radio emissions over time, 
And some even propose that maybe these were asteroids or larger rocks or potentially even planetary pieces falling onto the surface, creating huge emissions and huge explosions in the process, which would then obviously result in radio waves. All of these to some extent do make sense, but there was no way to definitively prove this just yet. And that's until these recent observations from the same magnetar right here in the Milky Way, and more specifically from the observations of its rotation, because it turns out that even the spin of the magnetar changed during this period. And so this new paper actually made some really intriguing propositions and potentially explanations for how all of this works. And it involves a concept known as glitch. Now in this case, when it comes to neutron stars, glitches mean only one thing. A sudden, unexpected and unusual change in the rotation which accelerates the spin or the pulsation by a tiny, tiny fraction, usually one in a million. And so basically the pulsars in this case suddenly start to spin just a tiny, tiny, tiny bit faster. And today it's believed that all of this happens because of a sudden shift inside the neutron star itself. And very likely because the magnetized layers inside the neutron star slow down over time, whereas the inner part does not, which then creates a kind of a stress on the surface, resulting in a kind of a star quake. And this transfers a lot of energy to the outside, which then accelerates the rotation of the star. This actually has been observed around several different pulsars, and the theory and the explanation makes quite a lot of sense based on all of the observations. But what about magnetars? Well, first of all, not enough are known to us to actually make any predictions or make any theories clear just yet. But in this case, when observing this particular magnetar, the scientists discovered that it seems to have experienced an anti-glitch. Its rotation speed, instead of increasing, decreased just a little bit. Or essentially, it slowed down its rotation. But to be clear, this has been observed before. It has been seen at least twice before in other magnetars as well. And these anti-glitches currently do not have any explanation. But by collecting more data from NICER, the X-ray telescope on top of the ISS, the scientists behind the study started to make very intriguing propositions and very intriguing explanations. The changes observed are most likely coming from the surface of the magnetar itself. And although normally it would take thousands and thousands of years for magnetar to slow down, which is usually due to the interaction between the magnetic field and all sorts of matter and emissions around the star, in this case this only took a few hours. And the scientists believe that it could only happen if there was a strong emission of various particles coming from the star itself lasting for several hours. Sort of similar to a volcanic eruption, introducing a lot more particles which would then interact with the magnetic field. And this interaction would then lead to a slowdown which had to release some of this kinetic energy as tiny bursts of radio waves observed from planet Earth. Or it basically changed the geometry of the magnetic field which then affected the rest of the neutron star. And this then led to the emission of several fast radio bursts that were discovered in October of 2020. And because in this case the X-ray emissions, the radio emissions or the fast radio bursts and the change in the rotation all seem to have happened around the same time, it sort of implies that all of this was most likely connected. Although the radio emissions lasted for almost a month, suggesting that this was a relatively long episode of the magnetar basically slowing down due to all of this matter released to the outside. Or in other words, following this volcanic eruption, the emissions most likely changed the rotation relatively slowly, with each additional change releasing radio waves. And the emission itself occurred somewhere along the magnetic poles, which at the moment makes this one of the most exciting and most detailed explanations for how certain FRBs seem to be created in the universe. It does not explain all of them and it definitely doesn't explain the ones that seem to repeat extremely frequently and sometimes up to 2000 times per day. You can actually learn more about this in one of the videos in the description, but it does explain many of them, at least to some extent. And more importantly, it does explain why certain magnetars have been experiencing these unusual slowdowns, although confirming all of this would be relatively difficult. Mostly because these are still really rare objects and FRBs in the Milky Way are even rarer still. And so it will probably take years and years of observations from other objects and possibly discoveries from a lot of other magnetars before any of this can be confirmed or before other proposition can be made. But for the moment this is probably one of the better explanations for what the scientists have been detecting so far in the last few decades and for why magnetars slow down, what causes certain FRBs coming from magnetars and how all of this seems to work. But obviously there is no explanation for what actually caused the eruption itself. 
Here, the scientists refer to this as impulsive crustal plasma shedding, but why this happened is still not clear. Nevertheless, a pretty exciting discovery and a really important update when it comes to FRBs. Anyway, once we learn more, I'll make sure to follow this up in another video. Until then, thank you for watching, subscribe, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, and maybe support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.